course it was the intro for one of my favorite movies, man, of all time. So we're going to go ahead and introduce this. This is the next installment of Blastic, the podcast where we review black classics in film and television. It is me, your host, Louis V, and... Your boy, K-Rock. What up, fellas? How you doing, ladies? So happy to be back in here yes. doing Blastic. Uh-huh. And we are doing... Actually, a series of classics. Mm-hmm. We we took a, a a little a little detour and did a couple TV shows. I hope y'all like uh, those episodes that we gave to y'all. I uh, but we getting back to the movies, man, and, and we're gonna do a series. We were gonna do one, but then we thought we might as well just do all three of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna do Barber Shop. Mm-hmm. This whole series, the, the the first movie, the second one, and the third one, the next cut. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Barbershop. Listen, Barbershop, it was one of them interesting movies, especially like with the first one. It Well, I'll just stick with the whole series for now. I love it because it's a different storyline. Mm-hmm. It literally signals in on something that we all know and love. Mm-hmm. Just something as simple as the barbershop. Like, I often felt like before the movie came out, like a lot of these conversations in this barbershop should be put on film. Like, you have so many different personalities from the new person at the barbershop that nobody fuck with to the person that feel like they just high and mighty and the best thing smoking, you know what I'm saying? It's just so many different dynamics. The person that just got out of jail cutting hair. Mm-hmm. Like, you run into so many of these different dynamics and it's cool that you see it. Just represented in this movie in a fresh way is not... It's nothing dramatic and crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He said, I don't know about oh, that. Oh, no, no, it's not in a bad way, but you said, she said nothing dramatic, but yeah. I um, wouldn't say, like, niggas dying and, like, get chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Well, okay, we will get, we got to get to the third one now. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. He said, niggas started dying. <laughs> okay. Not ready to die. I know what you dying. mean. No, like, no, no, it no, was no, good no. PG-13. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was that. Family yeah, yeah. fun, you know. But, yeah, I, I think to the untrained eye, when you see these movies, if you hear, like, the overall plot. I was like, is this the same movie? And as I watch, I go mm-hmm. back and watch it. I was like, no. You have similar... The characters are the same. Uh, you have similar problems. But if you look at the overarching story in each of the movies, it's a totally different set of circumstances. But yeah, I absolutely love the movie. And we're going to get into it. Um, Like I say, I mean, we're going to run through the history of the movie. And then I'm going to give you my feelings for the movie and everything like that. Well, shit, we already yeah. know the first one came out in 2002, man. So, Barbershop mm-hmm. is basically an American comedy, uh, American comedy media franchise that basically started in 2002 under the direction of Tim Story. Tim so, Story. he did all three of the movies, correct? No, Tim Story. Okay. Tim Story did not do all three of the movies. Tim Story did that one. He's also known for Think Like a Man, the Think Like a Man mm-hmm. franchise. Shots he directed him. like the two uh, Fantastic Four movies. He did a lot of another great uh, black director. He's very great. Um, dope guy um the second one was directed by kevin rodney sullivan another black guy that was released in 2004 and the third one it was directed by the great malcolm d lee uh barbershot space jam a new legacy undercover brother yeah. all black guys and i think that adds to yeah. the movie as well and it's interesting to know that all three of them was made by three different directors because even though they have like the same people in the same story the same kind of you know mm-hmm. main story it's interesting that uh, they feel different. Like each movie feels different, even really? in the way that they're shot. I think it's <sighs> some of that could be but attributed, I think it's attributed to time. time. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> because I'm a, technology I'm a, got better. Because <laughs> I'm gonna compare it to something else, not in a negative light, but I think uh, it's contributed to time. But yeah. that's and money and yeah. money. So yeah. we're gonna get we're gonna get to that as well. That, that's I'm just gonna be a good conversation, man. So yeah, the barbershop box office gross the original one. Made eleven, well, made seventy-seven million on an eleven million budget. That's not bad. No, it's not. I mean, that made <laughs> a lot of money. You made it seven times over. Right. I like so it. <laughs> Barbershop two back in business, grossed sixty-six million on a budget of between sixteen to thirty million. Mm. Made his money back again. And the last mm-hmm. one, Barbershop, the next cut, box office was a uh, fifty-five million dollars on a twenty million dollar budget. That means every movie made its money back and then some. Yeah, Each man. movie was critically praised and made its money back. That is amazing. And it, it was one of, it's interesting because I always remember the movie theaters just being packed out for Barbershop. Like anything Ice Cube does, like we fully support. He's one of those people that like 
if he puts out a family film, you're going to go watch it. If he puts out in any type of comedy, any shit, when he gets in his rated R bag, mm-hmm. we going to watch it. Anything Ice Cube puts his, his name on, his stamp on, we going to support. So I, I vividly remember, like, at least for the first, definitely the second one, Magic Johnson being packed out mm-hmm. for that second barbershop. I didn't actually, I think this first one, even though it was such a box office success, I wasn't old enough, Maybe. but it was definitely one of the movies that I came around to on DVD. Definitely mm-hmm. had it on DVD, but didn't get to see it in theaters. But yeah, that, that second one, mm-hmm. I think I found out the movie around DVD era. The bootleg V. I remember seeing. I remember the. <laughs> I remember the bootleg seeing the bootleg VHS tape. I remember that clearly. You but when the DVD in a barbershop, right? right. <laughs> right. But here's the kicker. This is a, a come around moment for me. I the first thing. Barbershop, the original barbershop on DVD is how I learned everything I know about filmmaking from an early, like early. Wow. I used to watch the 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 behind the scenes footage, mm. just how to be on the set. I saw it. Cedric the Entertainer was the first part. I was like, mm. I saw him acting and the, that type of acting. I learned at an early age before I even stepped on the set. I used to watch that DVD so much. Dope. So there was just a, a big come to moment when I, spoiler alert, I actually was able to actually sit on as an extra for Barbershop 3 later oh, on yeah. down the line. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Actually, hold on, man. I think I think he was inspired a little bit because he had a role in the quad where he was cutting some hair. Right, right. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, hey, life comes full that circle. Was, no, no. That, that whole thing was when I, talk, when I was talking to the director, going on a tangent, when I was talking yeah. to the director, I was like, oh, so like, uh, Cedric the Entertainer in Barbershop he's like yes and I was like that's how I get it but let's get to the movie so let's get to the movie I like it man so we gonna go ahead and get into the plot for each individual film real mm-hmm. quick nothing crazy y'all already seen it y'all love it we just gonna get we, we just here to appreciate it and give it its flowers man mm-hmm. Um, so the first movie man you already know huh, Ice Cube he's like a he's a barber man he's taking over his father's shop who passed away and he don't really want to have that shop, but it's just something that he has to have. You know what I'm saying? It's probably the most consistent thing uh, as far as stability, bringing in funds. So he kind of feels like he's stuck. He's one of them niggas that be doing a lot of uh, business ventures that don't really making pop music, off and shit. Producing, Make, making music, like producing that. different things he like that. To do other things. We're going to put you in, in, in Oprah's guest house. We're going to mm-hmm. have it, baby. It's ours. It's ours. What a guest house. Like, where is it? So. <laughs> He he's at this barbershop and I love it, man. Is it honestly the storyline is so simple. Like he wants to give away the barbershop. So yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wallace. He wants to say, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He come through, played by the legendary Keith David. Like, right. And and then we're gonna get into the cast we in have a second. To. You must have um, really have to. Uh let's do that now. Right, right, right. Star studded cast, man. We got Ice man. Cube, Anthony Anderson. He was hilarious in this film. Oh yeah, great. Uh Sean Patrick Thomas, Eve. Troy Garrity, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Ely, ah, that guy, Leonard Earl <laughs> Housie, uh, Keith David, and Cedric the Entertainer. Um, what's the other guy's name? He was so funny in this movie. Uh, Lamar Tate. Lamar Tate. Lamar. I, I, I usually, I, Lamar. I, when I first saw that, I thought that was Lorenz Tate. I did not realize <laughs> they look totally different now. Yeah. But I had no clue that that was not the same name. Shouts out to him, man. Thug, yeah. nasty, nasty, nasty thug. thug. He's doing that shit. <laughs> But listen, man, let me tell you something about this cast and about this movie. Everybody's everybody there. The one thing about these movies that I find so uh, fascinating is it's a plot driven movie. You have to act the writers. Shout out to the writers, because you have movies where you have superheroes and you mm-hmm. have movies where you're going different places. The majority of this movie takes place in one area. That means it's dialogue heavy. On one street. And right, right. It is dialogue in one heavy. Barbershop, yeah. And is they they great dialogue in each of the movies. Uh all the actors are having fun and sometimes that can get old very quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. And that is so dope. Each of like like I say, you got different characters. You got Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. Um, he's the old cat that stayed around in the barbershop. Mm-hmm. It could have came out very cartoonish, like and but and we're gonna get around the barbershop too, and I'm gonna talk about that nice. too. Um, you got uh, you got Eve. She's she's the man. She's the lonely sister in there. She's like the strong black woman. You got Ricky played by Michael Ely. He's the thug that dude guy. trying to do something different. Cutting With the hair. pretty eyes, right? You got the African. You got Dinka. You got mm-hmm. he's in there. He's thrown in there with him. You got Isaac. <laughs> that's the white guy that cuts yeah. hair. 
you got Jimmy, you got the brother in there trying to do something better. You know, people are fucking with him every chance they get. <laughs> College boy. I mean, that's, know that's it pretty... All. Right, right. That's pretty... But, it, but it's normal. Like, I'm, right. I can feel Greenbrier, that barbershop in Greenbrier right across from Burlington Coat Factory. I feel that energy from barbershop. Wild part about that. <laughs> wild part about that. If you go in there right now, there's a barbershop too posted on that wall. Really? You're going in there right now. It is. <laughs> right now, you're going there right now. But yeah, I love how that cast feel. You, they feel like a family. It feels like people that you see. Mm -hmm. It's it's just great. I love that. Yeah, but getting back to the story, you already know he ended up selling this uh, shop to a loan shark, Mister Wallace. Uh, then he has second <laughs> doubts about it because at the end of the day, like fam, this is the consistency, and this is this. You can make something out of this. This don't have to be what you think it is. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to try to get the shop back. Of course, as a loan shark, you're going to say no. <laughs> so he gets into a whole situation. Oh, I want it. The nigga oh, try to leave your money and shit. Like, like the fam. And then you don't have the, he said, fam, you don't got a 20000 that I gave you? Like, you don't have anything? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, it's wild. Man, but that's really one of my favorite. It, it's one of my favorite installments in it just because how early it was in, in the culture of, of it. I think it really made uh, it just highlighted barber barber shops, and honestly, I think it made a lot of more niggas want to get into the craft of it. Like mm -hmm. they highlighted it in such a beautiful way. What was some of your favorite scenes from it? Oh man, I got I got, man, said, I listen, got a few. I got so many, and I got so many favorite scenes. It's not even really scenes. It's just Cedric the Entertainer. I think this is Cedric the Entertainer steals every scene in all of these fucking movies. Mm -hmm. This is. If you, this is Cedric, the outside of the Kings of Comedy, this is his signature role. He went crazy. So Cedric the Entertainer, period. He went, wait, he went so crazy. Then some happened, I actually see it in the notes. Then yeah. some happened where Rosa Parks, he made that joke about Rosa Parks sitting her black ass down on that bus. And Rosa Parks, they, they tried to sue the movie, right? Right, that was going to be part of the black oh facts. Oh yeah, so, my God. Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, <laughs> history of when that was shot um you know the usual uh, uh al sharpton mm -hmm. and everybody they wanted that taken out of the dvd release they wanted to uh boycott that and even the director said hey look i wasn't crazy on it but it's a movie it's a joke that's what the character said yeah. and we have other characters around him to say mm -hmm. that shit's not right yeah that's not how such the entertainer feels but that's how the character feels so it stayed in there such an entertainer run so many awards off that. The yeah. movie, it is what it is today. And it's entertainment. And I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Some of my favorite scenes come from come from Brother Tate, man. Mm -hmm. When yeah. he was trying to get that ATM when the uh, apartment started to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. Immediate comedy. And the fact that him and Anthony Anderson thought that they could walk down the streets of Chicago with a whole fucking ATM right, right, right. covered in bed sheets right. was just crazy. <laughs> in midday. And I loved it how they were able to take that side point, like that 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 a whole another plot plot point, and bring it into that right. way. Yeah, and and that's how they they mm -hmm. wrapped the story up. He was able to get the money. I think he paid back the man, or maybe he didn't have to pay back the man. He didn't. No. He didn't have to because the the ATM they, had an award. Cause they yeah, found it. man. <laughs> Uh, and another one of my favorite uh, bits in the movie is the Who Drank My Apple Juice bit. The whole mm -hmm. Eve, definitely, absolutely loved that bit. That's one right. of my that's. These movies have so have shit. This. And when the white boy showed, boy, hey man, I can cut hair too. Right, right, Play right. Play one of right. my favorite songs, man. Ooh, and that that oh leads into God. some of black. That's it. That leads into black facts, mm -hmm. man. Do you know who drank the apple juice? You have, do you have a guess who black who drank the apple juice? Did Michael Ely drink the apple juice? No. So on the DVD deleted scene, there's oh, a scene that shows oh, that wow. Cedric the Entertainer is the one who drank the apple juice. <laughs> Now, mind you, like, this is what I mean, the, the genius of Cedric the Entertainer. In the scene, oh, you hear him funny. say, I know I didn't. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> like, this is like, that, stuff like that that's just off the wall, bro. Man. Man. I'm but I love that initial movie, man. It was a great start to what turned into some real crazy shit. By the time Barbershop 2 came right. out, it's big time now. Right, right. Like, I got one more question for you. This is, I'm going to throw this black fact because I love these black facts real quick. So, during the before the production of Barbershop 1, the cast had to spend three months in actual barber class. Mm -hmm. Can you guess who was the only person in the movie that had actual barber skills? Who actually ever cut hair? I'm going to go with the African. Mm -mm. Uh, 
It was actually Troy Garrity, the guy who played Isaac, the white guy. Okay, interesting. He was the only one who actually cut hair. Interesting. But anyway, owned the barbershop too, back in business. Listen, man, that's that's probably damn. I already said the first one was my favorite. Hey, listen, man, the I second one is a, is a is a is a strong second. <laughs> I loved it because it was different to me. They just, of course, the production value felt a lot better, um, mm-hmm. a lot different, and they was just able to add on to the cast that they already had. So mm-hmm. added on to the cast that they already had, minus Anthony Anderson in this one, minus Keith David. You added on Queen Latifah. You mm-hmm. added on Kiki Palmer, which this is her first role, which I didn't know. I thought mm-hmm. I, I get my times mixed mm-hmm. up. That came yeah. out in 04. Right, right. So Kenan yeah, Thompson. That's her first one. Adding in Keenan Thompson. Queen um, Latifah. Yeah. This Harry Lennox. Definitely. Man, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you something about Kiki Palmer. I hope she don't watch that. If you Uh-oh. saw that, if I saw that, I have never thought she'd be where she is today, even though that's a child. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you, and I love her to death. I hey. never, I'm telling you. But she was great, though, but I still know. So, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and break down the plot of Barbershop. Go so, Barbershop 2 takes place two years later, or we see it two years later. Mm-hmm. Calvin, you know, he inherits the shop. So, now it's to the point where they're moving along, trekking along, having mm-hmm. a good time. But, you know, of course, uh, gentrification has to drag his ass into it. That's so, bad. you got like a company. In 04. Right, so you got a company that's coming through buying everything. So they're buying everything. The uh, the 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 uh, it's nappy cuts isn't exactly. It? <laughs> nappy cuts is getting put right there. Um, you got a Jamba Juice across the street. Mm-hmm. Movie theaters. You see this stuff in the movie. So now they have to figure out how are we going to stop this. How how are we going to get everybody not to sell their mm-hmm. their businesses and how are we going to keep it floating? Right, man, man. So that's pretty much the plot of two, which is still different from yeah one. But it's also showing different problems that shit a business owner can face. Like you're right. going through different issues of even wanting this business in the first one, and then in the second one you're dealing with gentrification. They trying to buy up the block. So I love it, man. Of course, at the mm-hmm. end of the movie, of course everything works out fine for for. C- come on, man. Right. <laughs> Barber shops don't work out for us. So yeah, he ended up keeping the shop and um that because shit they want shit. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. But I um I love that movie, man. It they, it, it was. Funny as hell, and I love that they gave us more backsight to uh, to Cedric the Entertainer's mm-hmm. character. I oh. love that. I love the little flashbacks. Uh, too fine. With with him in a bond. Bond. Yeah, and I'm gonna <laughs> tell you, cameos, man. And I'm gonna tell you, man. As a kid, I saw it and I liked it. And I, but I never. I'm like, what is this? I don't get why we're going back and forth. Uh, I didn't. And I, this is a, a running theme of the show. Every time I go back and watch it, it just. I was like. Why oh, do you, why like, do you have a chair? Right, 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 right. Like, and I get it. You like, don't I, cut. <laughs> I understand what it is. You get background mm-hmm. from the opening scene of him right. running through the door, meeting the dad. Yeah. Like, it's so these the, the movie is so the series itself is just so like mm-hmm. it, it, these people aren't here for they're there for a reason. He's yeah. there because he knows the dad. He he knows yeah. the, the son. He's like everybody's connected. They're just not thrown together like, yeah. and we're gonna get into it. It's not like uh, as much as I like the Friday series. There's a it's it's a different feel. Yeah, it's an adult definitely. movie, and I gotta say that's one of my favorite parts of Barbershop too. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes is are the scenes where you get the him uh, stopping the the uh, the riots, mm-hmm. him stopping from burning down the. the and this is why yeah. I praise Cedric the Entertainer because you not only do you see him do it comedy, you see him do dramatic really bits yeah. and like in between right. it. Um, outside of that. It's just a, such a good movie. You That's know? a fact. And one thing that I really loved about it, too, is that it literally started a whole nother movie. Like, you had Queen Latifah's character mm-hmm. in there with her beauty shop, and literally it started hers, uh, her movie, Beauty mm-hmm. Shop, right, right. <laughs> that came out the following year. So exactly. you saw that they Queen Latifah came on that set, had a chemistry. People was like, yo, I like this. I think we should see more of it. Hey, why right, right, not? Right. It had it came come out the following year, and that movie was... You know, it's highly regarded as well right. as another good, great Pretty film. good movie. Good um, spinoff. And, and again, I'm glad you mentioned Queen Latifah because mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes in the movie oh. is the scene where they introduce Kiki Palmer and oh what leads to God. that immediately after. Like when I tell you, if, I don't care if I'm like skipping through BET. 
If it's there, I'm, I'm stopping watch and watch that scene. <laughs> like, the Cedric it. Entertainer's face mm-hmm. when Queen Latifah walks out that door. Yeah. He's like, oh shit. He's like, immediately. <laughs> it's, oh my God. I, I l- vividly remember everybody in Magic Johnson over there on Greenbrier. Man, shouts out to Greenbrier when it was lit. Exactly. Uh, I remember everybody in that theater just laughing because that, that movie was so, they didn't try too hard, bro. It was mm-hmm. so genuine. The writing was great. And it was just real. Like, mm-hmm. it was real as shit, man. But I love Barbershop too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other scenes you got that you love? Uh, just, I mean, outside of outside of that, um, <coughs> the, the cookout scene where they're going back and mm-hmm. forth, um, the the flashbacks with uh, Cedric the Entertainer. I mean, it's just a good movie all the way around. And like I say, that's it, when motherfuckers start to love uh, Michael Ely for real, for real. Yeah, that's too. That not was in the, the first one, one just yet, but that second one, they was like, mm-hmm. <gasps> when right, Ely right, got, right, I was right. like, man, right. And <laughs> you mentioned something else. It, it was able to spin off uh, Beauty Shop, and mm-hmm. there was also around that same time, uh, HB. It might have been Showtime. They also had a uh, a television show. Did you remember? Did you know that it was like maybe a season? Or two, it was Maybe actually so? Omar Epps. Omar Epps, uh, Mike, not Omar Epps, not Omar Epps. Uh, woo, I should know this dude's name. No, Barbershop. It was a television show named Barbershop. It took all the characters, oh, they recast the characters. I do remember that. I it remember was, that. I remember that. Omar Goody. Omar Goody. He was playing. That. He was playing that character. Very. I think. I need to go back and check that out. Me too. I need to. Maybe I never saw that. Something needs to be researched from that because right. it's. You can make a series out of that. Definitely. Put it on FX or something, it, and it'll hit. It'll be really I, good. That definitely do, definitely do. But yeah, man, the third and final installment of uh, Barbershop, Barbershop 3, the next cut. They don't even call it 3. Barbershop, the next cut. I This movie, I, I saw it. The hype around it was great because it, it took one of them big-ass gaps like Best Man did. Um, I saw it. It was cool. I didn't really go back to it. I, I saw know. it three times in the movie. Yeah, I really? loved it. It was the wow. funniest movie that year, I think. Wow. As far as the cast, they took out Michael E. Lee. I don't know where he went. I guess he was busy. He they added it in common. Yeah. Oh, really? So that, it seems like to me out. they it seemed like to me they wrote that char- they wrote the character to be there and when he didn't want to do it, he was busy. We don't know, I can't quote him. Hmm. Then they was like, Okay, we gotta rewrite it. Yeah. I wish he would have, but Common is a great entry. He's good, yeah. Um, they ended up, what, bringing back Anthony Anderson. They added J.B. Smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, who else we got in there? Who else From we got New in Cash, there? we got Nicki Minaj. We Nicki got Minaj, Common, yes. J.B. Smooth, Lamorne mm-hmm. Morris. Tiger got a scene in it. Uh, like I say, uh, Michael Ely didn't show back up. Who else we got? We Man, we got so many. They, they got... And then, uh, whew, we got like three. I got to get these three people. Because there's three new barbers in there. And they're not big like the rest of the cast, so I do not want to go past these people. We got Lamorne Morris. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that they said they was insinuating he was gay the entire time. I met him on set. He was extremely cool. So who else do we have? We have, um, we also have, I'm going to fuck this brother's name up. You got Yakarsh Akbar. He played Raja. He was the mm-hmm. Indian guy. And then he was the lone Indian guy. And we have Margaret Bingham that plays Bree. They're the three and this is why I like three so much. You bring in three younger barbers, yeah. and you have the old school cast. Mm. So yeah. I guess in this one, the the real issue, you know, as Chicago, as the time, shit, it was really good that they captured what was going on during the time. As yeah. as you can imagine, the streets of Chicago is running amok, so everybody's going crazy as far as violence is concerned. So his son is actually involved in the gang culture, and so the, pretty much the whole movie is about getting him on the straight and narrow and making that work as far as like with the barbershop because they ended up having like some kind of like uh fundraiser or something like that to like raise right, right, right. or something like that i'm really not as well versed in this film i'm gonna give it to you i'm gonna really give it not to as you well versed and this, in this is one. this is this is the thing about the movies in general and this this time around so you know this is what 2015 2016 mm-hmm. this is the height of uh obama this is the height of yeah the uh chicago going wild or whatever mm-hmm. and this is the um uh, this is when just people are struggling. So this time, there's not only one woman there. They have to uh, team up with the beauty shop next door. So it's one thing now. So now you got the battle of the sexes conversation. You got that going down. Mm-hmm. And what I like about the situation between him and the son, which is the brother from Power now, right? Michael Rainey Jr. Right. That's why I Getting all the work. <laughs> right. Um, so the, the, the story arc I like about that is um, Common's character and Ice Cube's character, good friends or whatnot, mm-hmm. then that's his son. He comes to stay with him. 
So Ice Cube is immediately like, I don't really like him around him. I'm trying to give him the Being benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I know your son is the person that's kind of getting my son into the shit, not right. knowing his son is the one getting him into right. the shit. I love that because it could have yeah. easily been the opposite way yeah. around. So, yeah, yeah that's that. Um, like you said, in this movie, instead of a business opening up next door, um, what what's going on is, I guess, the government or the local officials are trying to build a, um, what do you call it, an enclosure around the city, mm. trying to keep it away from, like, the other, quote, unquote, good shit around. Yeah. So yeah. you're trying to keep all the hood shit, hood, I guess, hood. inside. <laughs> and that's going to fuck their shit up. Yeah. So that's their whole thing. And it's like, hey, let's see if we can stop the violence in our community. Let's get free haircuts. Let's sit the gang members down. Yeah. Have them talk to each other. And they do it uh, to a certain extent. That gang. Hey, listen. Bringing Jam- <laughs> What's that dude's name? Jamal he, Wood- he played- Wooder. Yeah. yeah. Biggie. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he just sat there. Yo, I'm mad. We never gonna get to a compromise. <laughs> I'm leaving now. No, nah, it was that. It was that. Uh, it was that other brother that, that sparked the, uh, that hey. shit. He was really the one that sparked that shit. That shit but was um, movies, man. yeah, man, this movie is this this movie is great. Again, you bring back, and not only is it the main actors, because there's a lot of ca- people that come in and they aren't the they aren't the focus anymore. So you have right. Isaac come in. He speaks. I love that. He has it. He's right. like, hey, what well, not? Nah, just I'm let me going see now. these posts. Right, right. Yeah. You have uh, Sean Patrick Thomas. Mm-hmm. He comes in. He got a couple of scenes. He doesn't work there anymore. Right. That's fine. Um, uh, I like that. JB Dion Smooth. Cole. Dion, <laughs> Dion Cole actually gets a bigger part in the movie yeah, than the first it. two. Uh, that's great. Um, and like I said, just, just the cast is so much better. And this is what I love about the movies is not only do you have the main cast, if you look, there's people that you can tell like they're actually from Chicago. There's actors from Chicago that actually show up in each movie. Right. So there was, I don't know the actress name. She was a, a, an actress that was a barber in a, a, a beautician in the second movie. She's mm-hmm. here again in the second movie yeah. as one of the uh, patrons that's getting their hair cut. And she's talking yeah. about her husband, if you notice. Hey, listen, um, hey, great, everybody great, great. ain't going to turn down a check, man. We, no, 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 no. If y'all and, want us to come back, we're going to come back. But it makes the movie feel realistic. Because oh, yeah. even if yes. you don't know the character's name, especially sitting down and watching it, you see the people. They, I, even, you I grow even, with them during the time. I didn't even I didn't even notice the lady that, that owned the, 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 the daycare from the second one was actually in the ending scene of the third one. Mm-hmm. I was like... You you might you might you just might to see not how see people it. change. Anthony Anderson's character right. is now hustling yeah. the right way. Nah, he's business. still doing wild shit, but he's yeah. not stealing shit. <laughs> and he's like, you could you could you could totally like, why is he not? He mm-hmm. was in jail. Fine, fine. And he comes back, of course, through the popularity of Blackish. Yeah. They have to bring him back. Dope little side plot. That's fine too. <laughs> right, you yeah. have to. He's a, he's a huge star. I thought he was dope in the movie. Anthony Anderson. I actually got to meet him too. Nice. Uh, during the set, um, he actually played a joke on me. I was at the uh, the little craft service table where you eat, and yeah. he was sitting here. And I was like, "Should I say something to him? Should I say something to him?" I said something to him. He said out real loud, "You're not supposed to be talking to me." I'm like, "Oh my bad, man." I'm, he said, "Nah, I'm just shitting with you, nah, man. I'm funny. playing with you." No, he was kidding. <laughs> I'm saying that's funny as hell. Barbershop three was one of my. That was probably like the last time I did extra work. Everybody was so nice. JB Smooth was so dope. Mm. Comma took a picture. But as a matter of fact. This is gonna be a little extra. This this is look, this right here, this is a name tag to the Screen Gym Studio. I don't know if y'all can see this. This what is, what date does that say? 6 15 June 25th. Wow. This is this is how long. And as a matter of fact, these are these are two different tickets. I think two different tickets are when I saw three. Nice. Yeah, man. I, I I'm telling you, I just keep stuff like that. Like I like absolute like I'm going off on a tangent. Oh, that's a good one. That's a that's a great movie. And another thing I like about Barbershop 3, just to kind of wrap it up, Mm -hmm. is like...